Welcome back to Hardware Unbox for a laptop review. Actually, it's probably more of a laptop versus desktop type content creation video. Anyway, the topic isn't important. What you should be focused on is the fact that I'm gonna make you watch the entire video like this. Well, that intro probably hurt my watch time, but whatever, we'll make do with whoever's left. Right, so for this video, we'll be taking a look at the MSI GS43 VR7RE Phantom Pro. Uh, yeah, from this point forward, let's just call it the Phantom Pro, despite the fact that you now think it's a quadcopter from DJI and not a laptop from MSI, but anyway. Technically, the laptop was announced late last year, so it's not exactly brand new, though the revision I have is relatively new. Late last year, MSI released the 6RE model, which featured the Skylake Core i7 CPUs, and that model has been recently updated with the 7RE version that I have, and as you've probably guessed, that has the KB Lake Core i7s. Anyway, if you saw my unboxing boxes episode 27 last week, you'll know why I have the Phantom Pro on hand. And for the sinners who missed all the unboxing action, let me fill you in. Next week, I'm headed to Taipei for Computex, thanks to MSI, who have sponsored the channel. Part of the sponsorship deal included a laptop to create videos on while I was overseas. And for that, MSI has sent along a light and very compact Phantom Pro. The unit weighs just 1.8 kilograms and measures 345 millimeters wide, 245 millimeters deep, and at its thickest, it's just 23 millimeters. On paper, the laptop looks great for what I need. It has a snappy Intel Core i7 7700HQ processor, and although this is the base model, it's what you'd expect to find in a compact 14-inch flagship laptop. For those wondering, the 7700HQ has a base operating frequency of 2.8 GHz with a maximum turbo boost frequency of 3.8 GHz. Although that is a decent downgrade in terms of clock speed from the desktop variants, you do still get all four cores with hyper-threading for eight threads. The level three cache has been downgraded from eight megabytes to six, and this is how much level three you will find on a desktop Core i5 processor. Out of the box, you also get a very snappy Samsung SM951 256GB NVMe SSD as a boot drive, along with a secondary 1TB hard drive. It's a Travelstar 7K1000, which has a 32MB DRAM cache and a 7200RPM spindle speed. For a 2.5-inch drive, it's rather snappy. MSI has also thrown in 16GB of dual-channel DDR4-2400 memory. The screen is a beautiful 14-inch IPS panel supporting a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and it offers exceptional image quality with great viewing angles, perfect for video making. The only concern I did have with the screen was whether the 1080p resolution would be enough for editing videos in Premiere Pro, but as it turns out, everything fits well enough. Driving the display is the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB model, and I'm keen to see how this thing performs in game shortly, though I will save that for another video soon. For now, I want to see how this laptop compares to similarly configured desktops for content creation. That said though, let me start by saying that the laptop versus desktop argument is a little bit pointless. Laptops are of course purpose built to be portable, while desktops are designed to be set up and used at, you guessed it, a desk. And from there, most rarely move. So, if you need a computer for creating videos while on the go, a laptop is the only solution. The question though, how well does something like MSI's Phantom Pro work? And this is the very question I was asking myself heading into this week as I prepare for Computex. When working from home, my editing rig is powered by a Core i7-6950X, which is a 10-core, 20-thread processor. It's a bit overkill for Premiere Pro, and its price is quite horrendous, but getting sidetracked. I also have 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, so I'm not expecting MSI's little laptop to deliver that kind of performance. Still, I'm very interested to see where the Phantom Pro's performance positions itself on the desktop landscape. So let's go find out. Before jumping into the Premiere Pro CC testing, let's quickly run a few other tests. First up, we have the memory bandwidth test, and here we see the Phantom Pro is good for roughly 25 gigabytes per second. That places it on par with the Core i7-7500, and the reason for this is both configurations were tested using DDR4-2400 memory. This means memory bandwidth is down more than 20% when compared to the Intel systems running the faster DDR4-3200 memory. Not really a shocker though, given the difference in memory frequency. And there really isn't anything MSI could have done about this, as the HM175 does limit memory support to DDR4-2400. 
So let's move on and see what the Intel Core i7 7700HQ has to offer in terms of raw performance using Cinebench R15. MSI's Phantom Pro was good for a multi-thread score of 703 points, and this placed the Core i7-7700HQ just ahead of the Core i5-7600K, which is quite impressive and not far behind the Ryzen 5 1500X. The higher clock 7700K was 34% faster, but that's hardly surprising as we were comparing a 91W desktop CPU to a 45W mobile part. One thing worth noting though is that the single thread performance is well down on even the 7600K, and again this has to do with the clock speeds. In fact the 7700HQ is only able to edge out the Core i5-7500. Before jumping to Premiere Pro, here is a quick look at the 7-zip performance. Again, we find the Phantom Pro and its 7700HQ processor find themselves situated between the 7600K and the Ryzen 5 1500X desktop processors, which is quite impressive given the size of the laptop. Okay, so now we have the Adobe Premiere Pro CC exporting or encoding rendering performance. For this all important test, the Phantom Pro was able to overtake the Ryzen 5 1500X, making it faster than not just AMD's new quad core, but also the much higher clocked KB Lake 7600K. When compared to the Ryzen 5 1600X, 6 core, 12 thread CPU, the Phantom Pro was 26% slower running on the mains power. But that's not actually that bad. It was also 32% slower than the Core i7-7700K. That said though, it is worth noting when running from the internal battery, the rendering time is increased by 23%, and now the Phantom Pro is only slightly faster than the locked Core i5 desktop system. Still, for truly portable performance, that's still very impressive. So what took the Core i7-7700K almost four minutes takes the Phantom Pro laptop five minutes. This means for a 10 minute long 4K 60fps video, the laptop would take around 32 and a half minutes to complete the render. The Core i7-7700K enabled desktop system should take around 26 minutes. So in contrast, I feel the laptop isn't that bad and given the convenience of being able to render on the fly, I feel like that isn't much of a performance penalty. Before moving on to the battery testing, here's a quick look at how long the Phantom Pro takes to boot up from a cold start. As you can see, it's extremely snappy thanks to that NVMe SSD, which is great as it won't keep you waiting for long, allowing you to quickly get back to work or play. The Phantom Pro comes equipped with a 4-cell 61-watt hour battery, which offers a reasonable runtime, though I would say this is one of the weaker aspects of the laptop. Watching a movie in airplane mode, for example, with the brightness set to 50%, the battery did drain in 4 hours and 15 minutes. Still, that's long enough to watch a movie, but it's not quite as long as I would have hoped for. Meanwhile, the PC Mark battery test did run for just two hours and 36 minutes, though this is a much more brutal test. Still, you won't want to venture too far from a power outlet. Speaking of external power, the unit comes with a rather large power brick, particularly for such a compact laptop. That said, as you've just seen, the laptop does pack quite a punch, so it shouldn't be totally surprising that it runs on a 180 watt power brick, weighing 480 grams. Before I wrap things up, there are a few other noteworthy items I'd like to mention. On the rear, you will find a mini display port which will support 4K displays. Then on the right side, we find a Type-C connector, which is a bit of a jack of all trades, supporting USB 3.1 Gen 2, Thunderbolt 3, and DisplayPort. This means it's actually possible to connect up to three external 4K displays to the Phantom Pro using the Type-C, mini DisplayPort, and HDMI output. Other connectivity options include a Type-A USB 3.0 port on the right side, and then over on the left side we have another Type-A USB 3.0 port, SD card reader, two 3.5mm audio jacks, full-size RJ45 gigabit Ethernet connection, and a DC power input. Overall, build quality seems very nice, and there are plenty of aluminium trimmings, which give the Phantom Pro a very premium feel. The lid and chassis are reasonably sturdy for such a thin laptop, and I really like the lid design. Even with the big red dragon logo, I feel it still looks very classy. The lid also opens up very nicely thanks to some quality hinges, and inside we find a very slick Steel Series red backlit chiclet keyboard, which actually offers very nice feedback. Well, it's very comforting to know that I won't have any trouble editing and encoding my Computex coverage next week on the MSI GS43VR7RE Phantom Pro. The fact that I can render a 10 minute 4K video in around half an hour is great news, as I do plan to deliver at least one new video per day for you guys.
Finally, as always, there's just the issue of price. Currently, it can be purchased in the US for $1,500, which does seem quite reasonable, though I should mention that the American shoppers only get the 128GB SSD at that price. There are options for 256GB and even 512GB models, though I'm not totally sure on what the pricing is there. Anyway, down under we're paying 2,700 Australian, and considering basic GTX 1060 enabled laptops come in at around 2,100 Aussie, that's not a bad premium to pay for what's on offer here with this very compact package. Still, if the Phantom Pro is a bit rich for your blood, then there is a bigger Apache Pro model with a 15.6 inch screen, and that has half as much memory for 2,300 Aussie. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. I'm keen to put MSI's Phantom Pro to work next week, and hopefully I'll be able to create a heap of really cool content for you guys. Until then, do stay tuned because I have a big RX 570 versus GTX 1060 three gigabyte comparison in the works, and that will be coming later in the week. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys. Thank you.